Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown. Our coverage takes us uh, today to Phoenix, Arizona, and the unlikely story of a university that has uh, re-energized and refound itself. The head coach, John Saritas of Grand Canyon University, the home of the Lopes. He joins us today. John, how are you? Doing great, Scott. How are you? Good. Let's let's brace everybody for a quick little story of this university because it is not uh, something that uh, one would expect to hear about how a university starts. But as one time, Grand Canyon was in trouble. Absolutely. And, so and, five, and, and I'll just ask you to take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. So five years ago, we had 800 students. Um, today, we have 15,000. In two, two more years, we're going to have 25,000 kids on our ground campus. Um, so, you know, that, that type of growth has never been done. We are in a unique situation. Our, our school has been around for quite a while, but it was in a little bit of trouble. And our, uh, our new executive team came in and, um, you know, essentially took the school and, and made it for profit. We became a, a, a public, publicly traded company. Um, so we're, we're actually a business um, and they run it like a business. And I, and I think the growth comes from, you know, we got a little bit of money up front from investors, but the growth comes from our business plan and, and we have admissions rep that are across the country hustling for kids and our online enrollment I mean it's at 60,000 right now so we're, we're at 75,000 students all in all and a lot of the revenue from the online side gets pumped back into ground campus and that's you know we've, we've done a couple billion in construction projects um, just over the past couple years here in Phoenix absolutely amazing John I appreciate the knowledge in that you are in a year three of a four-year transition going to a division one level uh, but yet you aren't shying away from any kind of, uh, uh, what do we call, uh, any kind of competition. You've been on the road already to uh, North Carolina. You've been in Minneapolis facing Minnesota, South Dakota State, and Virginia. Uh, coming up, of course, northern Colorado. Then it's off to Iowa, Iowa City. You're going to face the Hawkeyes, Iowa Central Community, and Cornell. Talk to us about the idea of facing some of the best in the country as you prepare for your entrance into Division One competition. So we, we're, we're going after the best kids on the recruiting trail, and, and the best kids want to wrestle the best guys. So, um, you know, being in the unique situation that we are transitioning from Division Two to Division One, um, you know, our, our first recruiting class, the guys that are on campus currently, the true freshmen, the, the whole pitch to those guys, we had to talk them into burning a year, which is incredibly difficult when you're recruiting the best kids. So our pitch was come in, wrestle 16 Division One dates out of the gate, red shirt, then you have three years to chase at NCAAs. Um, and then the guys that we just signed this morning, are going to come on campus next year. They're going to redshirt, then they're going to have four years. Um, from a scheduling standpoint, you know, we, you know, we, we're always talking about wanting to be, wanting to be the best. Our, our vision, our goal is to be top ten in the country in five years. Well, we're on year two, so in order to catch those guys, we have to wrestle them. So, you know, um, you know, Iowa, Minnesota, NC State, UVA, North Dakota State. I mean, we got five programs that finished in the top twenty-five last year that we're going to meet head on, um, and and a ton of other guys that are that are very very tough. So we're going to continue to to go out and, and chase those guys. We didn't want to use our transition as an excuse. We wanted to use it as a motivator and really kind of see where we're at. You know, John, I know you're excited. It's obvious with your body movement, you are all over the place when you talk. I want you to look right up in the camera through the balance of the interview so when we show this on television, people can see what we're talking about, see who we're talking to. John Saritas, and uh, as our guest, the head coach, Grand Canyon, and uh, that's out in Phoenix, by the way, folks. Get used to it. You're going you're gonna to hear a lot more about it in the coming years, I can guarantee you. They're earning some great kids, signed a bunch of them today. Their national letters of intent were, uh, were signed, and those kids are looking for a great educational experience, and I think they're going to get it. Uh, let's talk a bit about where you see this program not next year, because next year is that uh, divining year, that uh, that bubble year, and then after that, competition's on hot and heavy. Absolutely. So we uh, we're going to redshirt everyone next year. So we're we're not going to field a dual meet team um, because we promised all the red shirts with our two classes, which makes up eighty percent of our team. Um, so moving forward, seventeen eighteen is championship year. Um, our goal is to you know. It, you know, is to break into the top 10, whether dual meet standings or tournament standings in 18 or 19. So, you know, 17, 18, I'm hoping is going to be our coming out party. The guys on campus now will be in year three. Um, the guys we just signed this morning, which, you know, we, we got a couple killers in there. They're going to be on year two. So we'll have three classes under our belt. We'll um, hopefully have some momentum coming off the redshirt year um, where we just train full time. 
um, you know, hit five, six, seven tournaments, you know, coming into 17, 18. So, you know, our hope is that we're, you know, we better have three or four or five that are going pretty deep in the NCAA tournament in Cleveland. What fun. What fun indeed. All new facilities as well, right? Absolutely. So, you know, being, uh, you know, the, the growth that we've had, you know, has allowed us, um, you know, to, or has allowed the school to build some amazing facilities. Um, you know, all of our dorms are brand new. All of our athletic facilities are brand new. I mean, it's it, it's pretty nice. It, it's hard to explain, you know, especially on the recruiting trail. The hardest part for us is to get these guys on campus. I feel like once we get them on campus, we got a pretty darn good shot. Last year we signed, we had 12 kids on campus. We signed nine. This year we had this early signing period we had seven on campus and we signed five two of those kids are top 100s and the other three are not too far behind wow wow well you know you and, and i think besides the school besides the facilities and the great educational opportunity i think they're going to follow john Saritas, and here's why you've got a track record dude i mean i remember you uh at old dominion you know that's where we first became friends and you had a, a tremendous experience there uh, helping uh, you know those kids achieve greatness. Six seasons there, I think, at, at ODU, and then uh, you went on to Chattanooga, helping to uh, guide that program. And uh, what was your experience like in Chattanooga? So Chattanooga is, a, is an amazing place. First and foremost, um, I miss it dearly. I mean, Heath Esslinger has you know been a good friend of mine and a mentor for a long time, and you know having the opportunity to work with him and, and learn with him, um, he's, he's taught me so much outside of the wrestling um, that, that I really needed to learn and grow from a coaching standpoint. I felt like my six years at ODU, you know, you know, I learned how to recruit a little bit, learned how to, to coach a little bit, but, you know, Heath really, um, you know, he created a culture there at Chattanooga where, um, you know, without being fully funded and being in a rural area, I mean, he's, he's done an incredible job of building some very, very tough teams, but more importantly, you know, those teams, I mean, I believe they're, you know, in the top 10 every year with team GPA, they're graduating the guys and they don't leave Chattanooga because they love it so much. They end up getting jobs in the surrounding areas. So learning that the, the culture side from him was, was awesome. Hmm. Well, Chattanooga is a magical place as far as I'm concerned. I absolutely love it there. And uh, they do some things very, very well at Chattanooga, uh, UTC, and the town itself is beautiful. So I, it was, must have been a hard decision to make to leave. But you land where it's 80 degrees today, palm trees outside your office. I mean, what's it like living in paradise? Oh, it's nice. Now, don't get me wrong. It gets pretty hot over the summer. They say it's a dry heat, but regardless, when it's 115, 120, it gets cooking. Um, fortunately, we travel quite a bit over the summer, but yeah, it's nice. It's, um, you know, be, being on the, the West Coast, I mean, it's it's a little bit different culturally, but, you know, my wife loves it. We love it. It's uh, It's been a pretty easy transition, and, and the people out here are great. I mean, this, you know, I think this university tends to draw a certain type of people, and, and um, you know, everyone supports each other, and uh, from a from a support standpoint, I mean, our, our support staff and administrators have been 100% bought in from day one. It has really, you know, have been a huge help in, in helping us, you know, position ourselves best to achieve our goals. You are one of those kind of guys, a personality where you wake up in the morning and the switch flips on. You go to bed at night and it flips off. Um, you were the fourth winningest wrestler in Virginia high school history. You have masked a career record while in high school of 181 and 13. Uh, I think, first of all, congratulations on being inducted into the Tennessee Chattanooga Athletics Hall of Fame. I thought, you know, well done, but well deserved. Thank you. And you, uh, you and your wife have a son too, right? We do. We do. We got a four-year-old boy, Braden. How old? Uh, not how old, but how is Braden enjoying the uh, the move and everything? You've been out there for a couple years now, but what what do you, what does he think? Yeah, oh, he loves it. He loves it. I think, uh, you know, he spends a lot of time up here with us on campus, being that my wife works here at school. So, you know, he's always running around and he's he's going to be raised in a wrestling room. People always ask me, is he going to wrestle? I'm like, if he wants to. But, you know, we're, we're already getting after it in the uh, on the carpet um, every morning. I like that. I like that. So it's a wrestling state of mind. Huh? I like that a lot. All right. So, Coach, uh, what are the five things that you t you tell a, a, a young recruit that you would like to bring onto campus as an athlete and as a student what are the five most important things in your mind well first and foremost you know when when we recruit i mean obviously they got to be competent in wrestling but you know we don't we don't mass recruit by any means i think 
I think we make a lot of calls and we, we send a lot of messages to, to narrow down our candidates, but we do a lot of research before we get them on campus. But the two things we're not going to waver on is character and work ethic. You know, we're fortunate we're in one of the few sports where we don't need size and speed to compete at the highest level. So, you know, we look for guys that, you know, that are not going to waver from a work ethic standpoint and a character standpoint. Um, and then the next thing we look at is uh, is academics. I think, I think GPA is a direct correlation of one's character. Um, those guys that are coming in, um, three of our five have, you know, a 3.9 or higher. Um, I think one kid's got a 4.3 GPA coming in. So that's, uh, that's incredibly important um, because I want these guys to leave with a meaningful degree. I don't want them to come in and wrestle full time and change their, their major a couple of times as I did in undergraduate. Um, you know, and leave here and, you know, in search of what's next, you know, so um, I want them to have a plan coming in. And then from the wrestling standpoint, we always say, you know, and again, I learned this from Heath, but re winning wrestling matches will be a byproduct of doing the right things. Um, so if we're eating right, sleeping right, going to every single class, holding ourselves accountable socially, going to, you know, making, you know, 3.0 or higher team GPA, getting a thousand hours community service, or which are our team goals, then we're going to win some wrestling matches. I think wrestling is the easy part. Let me ask you this. If if uh, schools start things the right way, there is no football. Is there a plan to offer football at any time in the future at Grand Canyon? So from my understanding, currently not as of now. Um, you know, there was a little chatter before I got here about the possibility. I think they printed some t-shirts. Um, I don't know what's in store in the long-term plan, but we're a basketball school. Um, you know, we have a 7,000 seat arena that sold out every single game. I mean, it's pretty amazing what they're doing here um, from a basketball standpoint, a promotion standpoint. So that's our marquee sport. Um, soccer, they're building a, a huge, we're gonna have one of the nicest soccer facilities in the country. I think it seats five to 7,000 um, outdoor, you know, arena, brand new soccer field. Um, um, so they're they're making huge investments in the sports that we currently have um, and even our Olympic sports. I mean, we actually we, you know, they, they give us a ton to work with. So, um, you know, they're, they're smart. I think football, it's, it's a huge cost associated with it. Um, but, you know, it would not surprise me if, you know, a few years down the road, they, you know, that they did implement a football program. You know, that that actually makes a lot of sense to me. You see schools that are so upside down because of the cost of football. Other sports must suffer. But it seems to me that uh, you know they're doing it the right the right way. Um, I'm very very encouraged by what I'm hearing not only from you but from the university itself. So congratulations in that regard. Uh, it's it's a lot easier to uh, to not start something than to have to shelve something because of a bad decision. So it's it's quite amazing amazing. Uh, John, we want to tell you thank you so much for joining us on the program and, and uh, surely we'll be doing more of this as uh, you guys progress toward uh, Division 1 from Division 2. We want to encourage you to have a great season. I look forward to seeing you on the road and as many opportunities as I can and uh, look forward to our next conversation. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. We appreciate it. Head coach, Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona, a bright spot in the world of academia and the world of athletics. They're doing it right at Grand Canyon. One of the things they did right, obviously, was when they hired John Saritas. John, thanks for the time. Absolutely, Scott. We'll talk to you soon.